you know what? I love this time of year. It's one of the briefest but most beautiful periods of the springtime. Just for a few short days, all these bluebell woods all across the UK just explode into a riot of life, a carpet of these amazing kind of purpley blue things just everywhere. They lie dormant the rest of the year just waiting for their moment, but you've got to be quick and jump out and grab them with a camera and be ready to get some, well, whatever you can really. And I've come to this one here in Kent because, well, it's not the thickest carpet, but I know this one is threatened by developers. It takes a special sort of someone to look at somewhere as beautiful as this and think to themselves, I reckon I could clean up building houses on that. Not a good kind of special person, unfortunately. So while this one is still here, I'm going to take a few photos. And today I've brought the digital camera along. I've got the Nikon Z6T, you're watching me on right now. And I've brought my Minolta Dynex 7000i. I did want to use my EOS 600, but I've only got a 50 mm lens for that at the moment because I've never been a, a Canon user for all these years. But with this one, I've got this. This is the 35 to 70 Minolta, but also because I think... Ooh, pheasants around here. Also, I think because the kind of pictures we want, we, a lot of compressing the distance, I've got the uh, 100 to 300 as well. Genuine Minolta Dynax stuff, or Sony E-mount, I think it is, isn't it? So we can capture the vivid colours on the Nikon with this uh, 40 mm f2. And also on this one, I'm shooting Washi X, which is not a film I've shot before, but apparently the colours are really interesting. And so these strong, powerful, these purpley blues, being closed in on by the pheasants now, um, this should look really, really good. And also we've got a lot of fallen trees, rotten wood, so lots of interesting stuff to find through here. I've got 36 pictures, so let's make the most of it. Now I'm going to start literally where I am right now because we've got a fallen tree here, fallen tree there, and fallen tree there. And it's a lovely series of perspective looking away from me. Let's get this down to 35 millimeter and focus on this first one. And the sun was out a few minutes ago. Just got one, got one solitary stem, just sharp here in the center of the image and a stagger of the three trees looking away from us, so hopefully that'll be quite interesting. But I think I'm going to go to the longer lens for the moment. Try and squeeze some flattened perspective type images out of this. Oh, the great thing about shooting film, you've not got to turn the camera off between um, lens changes because it doesn't care about the dust in the sensor. <laughs> it hasn't got one. Right, let's see what else we can find. Just gonna grab almost the same shot, but on the Nikon. This is with a fixed 40 millimeter, and I can wind this down to about f2.8, just to pick up a bit of shallow depth of field in this sort of lone bluebell here at the front, and get this, again, the staggered perspective of the fallen trees. Right, I need a thicker carpet of these things. Okay, this view might work. I need to try some deep rows of, uh, of the flowers, but, I'm struggling to find anywhere big enough because it's such a dense wood. So we want to get the, the compression count to 300 millimeters here. And shallow the depth down to, well, I can go to 5.6 at 300 on this lens. Oh, that's interesting. I want to do something with that, but I don't really know what. There's a little stream over there. Maybe I can use, again, the longish lens. I want to look through there. It's a shame there's not a carpet of bluebells immediately behind that because that would look amazing with that. That moss in front, wouldn't it? Nature doesn't always play along the way you want it to, does it? Hmm, there's some twigs sticking up that don't quite do what I want them to do. I've taken one shot, but I've only got 36 frames. It's not digital, I can't waste it. There's some motorbikes around here, enjoying the woods. Ah, looks like it gets a bit thicker down here, so we'll have more opportunities to get the, uh, the classic long lens through the flower tops if I nip off the path down here somewhere. Yeah, this is more like it. Perfect, and I've got a little bit of leaf intrusion in the foreground. Adds a little bit of depth, down to four and a half, because uh, as far as lenses, it's f4.5 at 100 end, f5.6 down the other one. Find my focus point. Let's come a bit closer into focus. I only got one focus point on this camera, so it makes it a little bit tricky. There we go. A four five. There we go. That's good. That's after. I do some of that tree. 
Mm, not quite with this lens. You kind of need a focal point further down to make it interesting. We've got the tree, the fallen tree again. Can I make that exciting somehow? Not really. I should have brought a model, shouldn't I? Someone to be in the photos for me. Well, that's nice, that tree with the moss, that's perfect. It's one of those locations you can just stand here and swivel 360 degrees and there's something different every direction. Now, something you should be doing as you're walking around here is looking where the sun's coming from because, fair enough, when the sun is on these things, they do look beautiful. But if you turn around and get the sun shining back through them, it looks just spectacular. The backlighting is just incredible. So you can come down to one of these woods early morning, late afternoon, something like that, and you're really gonna appreciate it and get the best out of it. Oh, this is nice just here. This is nice, the sun's just come out. Got a fallen tree in the background. Got on focus in the right place. Oh, here we go. Let's get to a bigger depth of field. Slightly odd than the Minolta, so you have to push left for a bigger F number right for a smaller F number. I could really do with a depth of field preview as well. Let's get manual focus. There we go. Let's get back to the wide lens again. Oh, that's good, that's nice. Scroll this down to f4.5, get the tree a little bit out of focus in the foreground, get the flowers a little bit far behind it, lovely. That's nice. Up to a 70mm. Oh, there's a fern over there. Oh, that's good, I've got this kind of moss-covered root in the foreground. Let's go to about 70mm. There we go, that's good. That's quite interesting, actually. Again, could do with a few more flowers. Funny thing is, I've got so used to using the flip out back on the digital cameras, which I really hated at first. I'll keep trying to do it on the film cameras now as well. Uh, that's interesting. It's a little kind of stand of bluebells around this little fern, which is making like a cone shape. It's quite, un well, quite different, really. But I'm gonna try and get a shot down here, which is gonna look, well, what you expect it to look like. It looks a bit thin, though. I'll come around here. Get more bluebells in front of it. It might work. Get down to f4.5 again. The widest I can go to on this camera. That's interesting, but it's not the most interesting as it could be. I've got a better idea. It looks like a funnel, so if I can get the camera right above it, I can get a different shot. 35 millimeter wide as I can go on here. Hopefully, this will look quite cool. Wow, knock, knock. Can the beaver come out and play? How cute. The greens are almost luminescent looking through this camera. I'm really curious what this Washi X is gonna look like when it gets processed. I come up to 29 frames now. So, got what, seven pictures left on this? I've gotta make them count. This is not like digital, you can go snap happy and just shoot everything. You've really gotta pick your moments. There are so many dens around here. The kids must love coming to these woods to play. Real shame if it does get built on. Right, this area looks like another opportunity. It's just finding that perfect point to, to look through the woods and find something, maybe a focal point or a shaft of light that's giving it that special something. I think we want the 300 mil on again. Well, oh, that's interesting, through that crook of that tree. Now, where was that moment? Where was that perfect point? I think it was about here. Mm, was it, was it, was it? No, I've lost it, there we go, there. 120 millimeters, f4, 525th per second. All oh, the sun's coming out, brilliant. The manual focus is getting confused. Excellent. That's good. That's it, that's the purple fuzz I'm looking for. I've got three frames left, make them count. Oh, that's nice. I've got a little bit of moss on a tree and I've got a bit of sunlight just catching that tree stump, perfect. 
brilliant. Oh, I'm at 37. I think that means I've finished the film. Bum. Hit one more. One more frame, maybe. Last one, I guess. I want the sunlight through it, really. There we go. Try and get the sunlight through there. Oh, there's so many targets. The autofocus does not like it at all. That's it. End of the film. Let's wind this puppy back. Well, that's me a roll of Washi X. I'm gonna post it off to Analog Wonderland in a couple of days' time. I'll see what I've got. Fingers crossed, something decent. Right, so I've shot my 36 frames on the Minolta and the Washi X, and I've shot a few frames on the Nikon as well with that 40 millimeter F2 fixed. So it'll be interesting to see how the two of them compare and how different or similar they are. Right, so we'll slow wander back that way out the woods again, grab a few more photos on the Nikon while there's some battery power left in it and get this film posted off. Let's see what we got. Well, that's all well and good I hear you say. That was a lovely walk in the wood and thanks for taking us along and you're welcome, I say back to you. But where are all the photos on the Washi X? You were using that Minolta all the time. I haven't seen any photos from it yet. What happened to the pictures? And well, do you know what? You and me both are wondering that because somehow Royal Mail managed to lose the film. I got back from the shoot, I packaged up that roll of washi in a parcel, fired it off into the distance, and that's the last time it was ever seen. So very sadly, I still don't know how washi looks on bluebells. This is very disappointing. Not only has it become an actual clickbait film because I've not shown you the photos I took, it's also really, really disappointing for me because I spent a morning shooting film which has just vanished. So I've lost my film, I've lost my processing, I've lost the pictures which is the most important thing. I'm just really, really relieved we shot some stuff on digital as well, otherwise we'd have nothing to show from this entire day. And at least the Nikon stuff looks really good. It just shows how good that sensor in the Z6 is, or the Z6 II, and of course also that 40 millimeter, which deserves a video in its own right, quite frankly. So I'm sorry I led into the video saying I was gonna shoot Washi and show you the results because I thought I was going to, I planned to, but you know, I've been sitting on this video for well, weeks now, hoping that the post office will find that roll of film and will ping it off to get it processed and back to me, but I think having chased it enough, I've got to give up. So, I'm sorry. At least you saw the digital pictures, but hey, such is life. Never mind. Next time, fingers crossed, better results. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, watch some more videos. I'm trying to get the watch hours up on this channel. See you later. Goodbye.